The Audi A6 45 TFSI is in India and we have its review. How does it square up to the big rival, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class? And the Benelli Imperiale review is also on the show. Ciao, namaskar, adab, welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I am Siddharth Naik Patnikar. You got a little glimpse of what's coming up and so I will not keep you from it. It is the new generation of the Audi A6 that's finally arrived here in India. And of course, we had to review it for you. And as you've seen, we have also brought in its key rival. Here's the story. The Audi A6 is in its fifth generation and this has simply got to be the best built, best equipped and best performing one yet. Sure, all new generations are meant to be an improvement over the previous one, but this goes beyond that. The car is credibly the true representation of what it is meant to be, a premium executive sedan that offers exemplary levels of fit and finish, equipment and very sharp, stylish looks. The new A6 has grown marginally over its predecessor and yet looks taut, muscular and poised for performance. And it is. When I first drove the car in Portugal last summer, I came away more than impressed than I had imagined possible. The new A6 was doing it all right. And at the time, we had the impression that India would get the 3-litre V6 petrol, that's the 55 TFSI, and the 2-litre 4-cylinder diesel 40 TDI. But plans and market environment have changed here since, and Audi chose the subsequently introduced 2-litre 4-cylinder petrol only for India as it moves away from diesel in the coming months. Now, since the beginning of time, relatively speaking, it's always been a certain way. The BMWs were the pure performance driver's cars. The Mercedes-Benz cars were all about comfort and luxury. And Audi was always trying, striving really hard to find the perfect middle ground so that it can be a little bit of both. And I say trying because it was kind of unsuccessful until now. I have to say that it's a great balance that the new A6 strikes between those two realms. It offers you a fair amount of fun when it comes to driving and performance. So when you're on the road driving the car, yeah, it brings a smile to your face. The different drive modes are very distinct. You put it in dynamic and things are actually a lot of fun. I have to say, I would like the steering to be a little bit stiffer in dynamic, but otherwise, very precise, great on handling, and uh, yet, not quite skimping on luxury or comfort. Though I have to say, the new 5 Series also does not skimp on luxury or comfort, but it's still a great balance, good to see from Audi and uh, certainly something that will make the A6 seem light years ahead of the last car. Yes, the new A6 does everything right. Well, almost. Even during my comprehensive drive last year with several other engine variants, it really had been the light steering that stood out as the only big negative for me. The handling on the India spec car remains just as good and the power delivery from the four-cylinder is surprisingly quick. The character of the engine is also extremely refined and I have to say it feels more powerful than it actually is. The gearbox is also slick and married beautifully to it. The paddle shift works well too. The various drive modes are distinct like I said though the car feels light and peppy even in efficiency mode. 
Features like cruise control and lane departure warning work quite well and effectively even in Indian conditions. The 18-inch wheels grip the road well and while the Indian spec is front-wheel drive, the need for quattro or all-wheel drive is not apparent. The new generation A6 gets a mild hybrid as standard. On the four-cylinder engines, that is restricted to just a 12-volt system. The mild hybrid recuperates some braking power for use during start-stop, etc. Very distinct and very much like the A8. That's the rear of the car, which has a nice, large, wide-stretched, classy, upmarket look. The uh, added bit of chrome actually works in this case. The tail light treatment, full LED, also looks really, really sleek and sharp. And yet it's a nice, short, compact boot. Most of the implication of space really comes along the wheelbase of the car. You can see that along the side, you get a nice amount of metal. And yet, while it's simple, there's no gimmick there. It kind of works for the car's design. As you come to the front, you start to realize that the A6, of course, is evolutionary, as we've told you in our last review as well and which means that uh, it doesn't really break the mold in terms of trying to do something very new or radical or drastic and yet it gives you a much sharper looking car than the previous one because you've got a lot of sharp ridges in the hood that are subtle and yet very edgy. The grille is massive and yet that works. The LED treatment on the lights up front, there's of course matrix LED at the top end, also really works. So the car looks lit, it looks agile and yet it looks upmarket and classy too. So yeah, I like how the car looks now, for sure. The new A6 has also grown marginally, like I said, but grown where it counts. The car's cabin length is up by 21 millimeters. Rear leg room has increased 17 millimeters out of that, and there is 8 millimeters more headroom up front, 11 millimeters at the rear. The car gives you the latest MMI or multimedia interface. The touch screens are split into two. The one above is for all things infotainment and navigation, while the one below is the climate control. The screens have haptic feedback too, which is great, and the system is also very intuitive very easy to use. Now globally the A6 takes on a whole host of rivals from the likes of Lexus, Acura, well here in India of course it gets kind of limited, you still got the Jaguar XF for what it's worth, but the BMW 5 Series in many ways defined this segment for the longest time. It was the big benchmark in that space, off late that has changed and especially here in India that's changed big time because the car that's run away with the popularity contest is this one. So in dynamic terms, yes. It's the uh, 5 Series that will probably still best the A6 in its current form and avatar, but in every other respect, it's got to still take on the benchmark car, which is the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. It is the best seller in the space. It's been a huge hit for Mercedes. And don't forget, this is the long wheelbase, which is the big difference between these two cars straight off. Yes, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class has become the best seller by a mile. Its long wheelbase master stroke guarantees ultimate rear seat comfort, pretty much a baby S-Class. It's 125mm longer than the A6, but the wheelbase is 156mm longer. A neat little touchscreen with your own personalized controls for the rear, rear AC vents with rear AC controls as well. The sunscreen, always welcome, and uh, of course, the little vanity mirror. And the part that you all really know about, which we've gone on and on about, which is the reclining rear seats and the ample leg room. I mean, these are the things that really define the uh, rear of the E-Class. It becomes the executive to be chauffeured in car, so obviously. Oh, wireless phone charging. Let me not forget.
Now you certainly don't get as ample a sense of space back here as you do on the E-Class, but then you know what? Unlike the last A6, this still feels nice and roomy. The biggest change, the seat pack, the comfort of the angle and just the overall contouring and cushioning of the seat. You've almost got this individual seat-like feel at the back for the two uh, rear seats. So of course, you can put a third passenger in the middle if you do want to. And um, it is a much heightened sense of comfort compared to the outgoing A6 for sure. You do have the uh, customary screens for uh, saving yourself from the sun on this one too. You even have the one at the back. And uh, you know what? Overall, the quality and the finish on this car just exudes a huge step up as well. I love the fact that you have individual temperature controls for the back. And again, it's a nice sleek touch screen sort of a feel that's been given to it. So uh, haptic controls again, and uh, you can adjust both fan speed and temperature for either side. You've got not one, but two USB charging points back here. Overall, I have to say that even though it's over 150 millimeters of difference in the uh, wheelbase itself of the two cars, this certainly by no means comes across as cramped or compromised in any way. So yes, the A6 is not nearly as opulent or roomy as the E-Class, but still gets a decent sense of space in the back. It's also pretty luxurious and well-appointed, especially the technology trim, which is the car with me. It gets you the virtual instrument cluster, four-zone air conditioning, ambient lighting, wireless charging, the Bang & Olufsen sound system and a few other things over the Premium Plus trim. Things like the leather seating, MMI, LED lighting and panoramic sunroof are standard though. And at prices that are significantly lower than the rivals, the car stands out. Though yes, the lower trims on the BMW 5 Series are diesel and let me remind you again that the E-Class is a larger car. The weak points on the new Audi A6 are the lack of a diesel or an all-powerful engine variant. The latter may follow as a portfolio enhancement at a later stage, but given its prices, equipment and drivability, I am happy to anoint the Audi A6 as a credible and worthy candidate in the premium mid-size sedan segment today. So it does take three to tango in this particular segment because the 5 Series is definitely the credible rival that also belongs in that comparison. You saw the prices, you also know that the diesel is the one that starts lower and then you've got that really nice powerful petrol at the top which will, like I said, in performance terms, best the A6 for sure. And even the diesel, very, very refined. All right, let's take a short break. We'll be back with the Benelli Imperiale. Welcome back. The Benelli Imperiale is Benelli's most affordable motorcycle in India. It's also a retro bike and it is one that takes on Royal Enfield as well as Java in the market. But is that all that it does or is there more to it than simply the price tag or the looks? Our review will answer that question. It's definitely retro, the new Benelli Imperiale 400. And the design is unmistakably 1950s, with that vintage look and stance. Now, looks are subjective, but to our eyes, the Imperiale 400 ticks all the boxes to give it that retro cool appeal. Now, modern classic motorcycles, retro team motorcycles with styling from the 50s and 60s with new technology have been quite popular of late, not only in India but across the world. We have the likes of the Triumph Bonneville, Royal Enfield's very own models. And today, we have this one. It's the new Benelli Imperiale 400. It's got styling inspired from Benelli's storied past. Back from the 1950s, the Imperiales of the 1950s, but it's got a brand new engine and it's placed clap bang in competition with Royal Enfield's best-selling classic 350. 
That's the one we're riding today, the latest modern classic in the market, the new Imperiale 400 from Benelli, India. The Imperiale 400 is available in a choice of just three colors, silver, maroon, and an understated black. The big round headlight definitely underscores the bike's 1950s design. Flanked by two clear lens turn indicators, but there's no LED lighting, even on the headlamp. The dual round twin pod instrument console adds a nice classic touch. And the flat white handlebar with a classic teardrop shaped fuel tank further accentuates the Imperialis 50s design DNA. The split seats are wide with a sprung rider seat, another retro touch. But there's also locally sourced components to keep the Imperialis price competitive. Suspension from Gabriel is locally sourced, as are the spoked wheels shod with TVS tyres. And both wheels come with standard dual-channel anti-lock braking system. The Imperialis stance, even when standing still, is most certainly retro. Overall, it's a handsome bike. And if you are a fan of classic design lines, the Imperiale does begin to grow on you. If you're in the market for a motorcycle under 2 lakhs, a modern classic like this, should you be considering this? Is it worth your money? All that and more after a ride. It's no off-road bike, but the Imperiale will quite capably take on moderate rough terrain. But the hard top is where most riders will spend their time with the Imperiale. And this is where it actually comes across as quite a likeable motorcycle. It may be an air-cooled single-cylinder engine, but the four-valve powertrain purrs straight to the red line without feeling strained or out of breath. It's not exactly quick by any standards, but the Imperiale 400 will hold respectable highway speeds if you're the kind who's into long-distance riding. Now this one, the Imperial F400 is powered by a 4-valve, 374cc single-cylinder engine and it's a fuel injected engine. The first thing that uh, immediately you notice is that this one feels a little mildly more rev-happy than the likes of the Royal Enfield 350cc singles. And uh, performance, uh, more or less the same. Uh, you can easily cruise at about 90-100 km per hour. We saw a top speed of around 120-125 when you're redlining at 6,000 RPM. Uh, but of course, if you're talking about vibrations, uh, like the Royal Enfield, this one also has some amount of vibrations. You don't feel so much vibrations on the handlebar, but you do feel a lot of handle vibrations on the foot pegs, on the tank, and on the seat. Anything above 3,000 RPM, the vibrations start creeping in. And uh, four valve engine, yes, it feels a little rev happy, and uh, it does rev uh, freer than the Royal Enfield's engine, but there are significant vibrations and uh, similar vibrations like the Royal Enfield. Uh, top speed is, like you said, is about 120-130 kilometers. Cruising speed, 90-100, you can cruise quite comfortably. The five-speed gearbox isn't hard or clunky, and the gears slot into place with reassurance. Always welcome in a quick downshift and overtaking maneuver. Uh, the only thing, uh, overall, I think it's a good ride quality, nice ride quality. Not outstanding, but it does the job well. Overall, I think in terms of performance, uh, in terms of the sound of the engine, it's quite evenly matched with the Royal Enfield. Uh, slightly more expensive, about 15,000 odd rupees ex showroom than the Royal Enfield Classic 350, but uh, quite evenly matched. Of course, we'll have to do a back to back comparison to see which one is the better bike. But uh, overall, I'd say the Benelli Imperiale 400 is right up there, uh, similar terms of performance with the Classic 350. In fact, the Benelli Imperiale 400 certainly has very good highway manners, if you're not in a tearing hurry to get anywhere. 
It can do triple digit speeds all day long if you want. And the engine will rev all the way to the red line without feeling like it will fall apart. But at the end, it's a classic after all, meant for easy relaxed riding. At 1,69,000 rupees X showroom, the Imperiale 400 definitely offers something different, something unique, and maybe even better in some ways than its competition. And that's it. We are out of time as always. There is very little time to bring you everything we want to, but I can promise you this: that on next week's show. you will get something really special from us something different and something that's worth tuning in for so definitely join me next week and on that note i will as always request you to wear your seat belts bye bye